Hello. Good uh, morning, everyone. Good day, everyone. My name is uh, Yoel Marek. I'm uh, currently serving as a vice president for research and science in Alexa Shopping. And uh, Alexa Shopping is actually uh, an interesting organization. Uh, I, I hope, I guess, you, all, you have all heard about uh, Alexa. Alexa is this very, very cool device that you're seeing here. There are many incarnations of Alexa. This is uh, the Echo Show 5. And it's basically the smart vocal assistant of Amazon. And within Alexa, because, you know, Alexa is our vision for the future of ambient computing, there is one skill that we are, uh, skill it means like kind of a, a vocal application that we, uh, we think is super important for the future of all our customers. It's shopping because, you know, Amazon is nevertheless about commerce. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk to you about, about this evolution and how we are trying to make ambient computing a reality for all of our customers. So let's uh, look at, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, the title of my talk is about uh, actually already referring to Alexa as if she was uh, a human being, right? And, and our role is really to help me to help you shop. That's what I'm going to talk about. But before we go and, and we dive into that, let's talk a little bit about um, assistant, vocal assistant, digital assistant, all this AI dream that you, you've heard about so much. Um, so if we uh, look at, you know, the history, the evolution of digital assistants, you must remember, you know, from the early days of, of series in around, you know, 2011, that was kind of a dream and it was so funny to talk to a, this kind of, of assistant with a very nice voice. And then, you know, we moved uh, soon after to Google Assistant. You probably, you know, also heard around 2014 about Cortana from Microsoft. But something happened with Amazon. We had this vision in the company not only to have an assistant on your phone, as everyone you know think about, but actually have to Alexa be an integral part of your home. And, and that's the idea of the, all these echo devices. So you must remember these kind of tubes that were like a, a speaker in your, in your home. And these far field interaction, the fact that you could be in your, in your um, you know, in your kitchen or in front of the TV and be able to talk to an assistant, not have to take your phone and talk to your phone made a, a big difference. That was a major breakthrough. But this presence in your in your home or in your kitchen was not just one step. And actually, the way we're looking at ambient computing, if you if you look at all these possible devices, you know, it can be the small echo dot you know, uh, that you see on the left. You can have it one with a screen like the one I just showed you. Uh, it can be in your plug. It could be, you know, with echo or it can be in your car. One of my favorite is really the one in the microwave that you're seeing here on the screen. I mean, you talk to Alexa and she's embedded in your microwave and you can ask your microwave actually to, you know, to just to cook a, a chicken and, and, and it, the microwave will know, you know, for how long, et cetera. That's, that's pretty cool. And of course the glasses and one of the most recent one that you see on the extreme right is the, uh, is the echo ring that you would have, you know, you just put a ring on your, I'm, I'm still waiting to get one, uh, on your fingers and you go to the supermarket and you're not taking your phone out, just talking to your ring here. It's maybe, you know, maybe I love rings, I like, love jewelries, but that's really cool actually. So we don't know which ones are going to be like a big hit, but I think the dream of ambient computing is really, you know, to try it and let's see what our customer like the most. Um, what we know already that all the eco device in the house have become, in, have become really an integral part of, uh, of the way that we live. You know, now if I go to another place, let's say that, you know, with uh, the COVID situation, I don't go much to hotels, but I know that I miss having a, a, an eco device there and start my day by asking about the weather, the temperature, playing the radio, because that really become a real habit for me. But having this ambient computing vision is not that easy. And that's... Uh, Let's talk about about how to do that. Uh, the, the you know the message I want to to share with you today is that we are living basically AI. We are living you know kind of in a science fiction because technically, and I've been you know in that field for the last maybe thirty years. I, I didn't think you know it would happen because it's really really complicated. To make it work, we basically had to tap into the you know the brightest mind of a, of our AI scientist, and we started to try. To, we started at Amazon to have this notion of what we call customer obsessed science, 
what we mean by customer obsessed science is that if you talk to scientists, to researchers, they love to invent, to be innovative, to write papers. And, and we love that as well. You know, I have a team of researchers. That's what we love how to do. But what's different at Amazon, the way we do research these days is really that we start from the customers and we move from there backward. The key thing is really to first understand our customers. Then we want to satisfy their needs. And we want to do more, more than that. We want even to predict their needs. They don't know yet that they are going to need an assistant and Alexa, right? They didn't know that they could use, you know, that for shopping. We're predicting it and we try to think ahead of time what they might want. And if we do it right, actually, we have this kind of flywheel and we are going to acquire more and more customers and delight them more and predict more needs, etc. That's ba basically this kind of flywheel of satisfaction that uh, we're dreaming about. So how do we do that? Um, we start with customer needs. What does that mean, customer needs? So we took the inspiration from web search. Yeah, I've been in, you know, in the search field really for the last 30 years, starting you know, with enterprise search, after that with web search, and now we're with the most modern challenge in search, which is voice search. And when you look at customer needs, actually in search, they haven't changed that much. Uh, these uh, three needs, informational, transactional, and navigational, they come from the world of web search, actually, as you see in, in, my, in my citation. Uh, but the, the beauty of it is that they exist everywhere. They also exist when you talk to Alexa. You know, yeah, let me, let me give, it, give it a shot. Let's see if it works, if I'm close enough. If I say, Alexa, what is the capital of France? The capital of France is Paris. I hope you could hear me. Um, and, you know, it's working. You can do that at home, you know, with your, with your own devices. It's pretty cool. But it's not only by, you know, by asking like this kind of informational thing that you're used to do, you know, on your, on your, on your web services, on your search services. Actually, where Alexa introduced something new and Alexa Shopping is really focusing on is really doing transactional. So on the web, a transactional needs, we need, you know, you buy something online, you would go to amazon.com. But now today, actually, from the comfort of your house, without doing anything, you can just ask Alexa to order toilet paper. And she will know what type of toilet paper from the past. You, you can actually add stuff to your shopping list. You're cooking some things and, you know, and you miss some garlic and you can ask Alexa to add garlic to your shopping list and she will talk to you. And that's super, super convenient. And you also have transactional needs, sorry, navigational needs. Uh, what that means is that on web, it would be to go, it would be it would be really to go to a, to a website, for instance, I don't know, to um, British Airways to book a, a flight, right? Here with Alexa, it's opening another application. My favorite is Headspace. I love to meditate. It's uh, the right time to meditate these days. And you can just ask Alexa to go to a third party application and do it from there. So it's really as if you had like the web hands-free in your home, uh, home yeah, on your kitchen desk. And that's, that's really, really convenient. Even more interesting that these informational, transactional, and navigational needs, they exist themselves in shopping because you're going to ask questions about some products. You're going to ask, you know, whether the blink camera is waterproof. You're going to want to buy a new one. You're going to have to go to the skill of the blink camera. So it's a navigational one. You want to do, to do something more, to add more questions, and then you want to add something to your shopping list. And the beauty of it, that shopping is not one action. It's not one click on a web browser. When Alexa is part of your household, it's really a journey. You go from informational to navigational, you go back to transactional, et cetera, et cetera. And we try to do that as natural and to escort the customer in their natural shopping journey as much as we can, because we need, you remember, we want to be customer obsessed to what our customers want and we want to delight them. So I told you that it's not trivial. That's why we need research and what we need science. So let me share a little bit of the, the magic be, behind Alexa. So first, there is this notion of automatic speech recognition, something that didn't work like, you know, 20 years ago. I remember, you know, I had teams, you know, trying to work and it was difficult. But then the beauty of AI and deep learning and large, you know, large scale computing, and we're starting to do that better and better. And actually, Alexa is pretty good at understanding my French accent in English. I love that. Not every assistant can do that. And, and now it's kind of, it's not perfect, let's be honest, but we are really, really at a level where Alexa really pretty, you know, really under, understands you pretty well. One thing, the, the way it works is that you start by saying what we call a wake word. By default, it's Alexa, but it could be Echo or computer. 
Then you say your utterance, your need, your request. You ask, for instance, here a question, what security cameras are Alexa compatible? And as soon as you call, you, you use this wake word, Alexa, only then she's going to send, and I'm calling her she, it's super important. It's not a it, it's a she. Um, she's going to send this utterance to the cloud. Before that, everything remains really locally in your home. That's very important to preserve the privacy of our customers. We send it to the cloud, to the cloud, and then we do some magic. So let's look at this diagram. It's a little bit complicated, but I just want to go really fast to, to, to tell you that you're going to have this big switch platform that's going to do recognition, then going to do, you know, what we call natural language understanding, NLU, find the right application that's going to, depending on the intent, do you want to ask for the weather, for sport news, for, you know, setting an alarm to put a, t a timer, ask for a recipe, all that, we need to do that in kind of ferreted platform. And when we get the answer, we generate back what we call TTS, tech to speech answer, and Alexa is going to talk back to you and you have your answer. So you see the complexity behind the scenes, a lot, a lot of software, a lot, a lot of, um, you know, machine learning, et cetera. So even in every level, I told you it's a lot, a lot, but at each level, each component here of this platform, itself has many, many subcomponents, and I'm not going to deep to you know to go too much into detail there, because again, it is complicated. Automatic speech recognition uh, goes in many, many steps as well. First, we get an audio signal. Then we have to put it, you know, really to 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 make it from analog to 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 digital. And then we are going to do all kind of modeling, and we are going to use lexicon, which are dictionaries. We are going to look at what we call language models and grammar. So many things are happening behind the scene and that just for the generic automatic speech recognition, that's why we need so many scientists. But then, you know, at the next level, we need now to make it shopping aware. So let's start with my first example because I want to give you an example, you know, an example that is not that trivial. So for instance, if I'm asking Alexa to reorder AAA batteries, so if you see now on the right side, the uh, you know, pictures of AAA batteries, you see that not to complicate it from going from the word triple T-R-I-P-L-E to the acronym AAA. You know, that's kind of simple natural language processing. We can make it work. We know how to do this type of mapping and we can, you know, send it to your home and it will work pretty easily. But look at the second example now. Alexa can tell you, that's actually what the ASR understood from what you said, from a real customer said. Alexa understood, and that's how she transcribed it. Can 10 year old kids play 10 grams? Two words, 10 grams. Can you guess what actually the, obviously the, that's not what the customer meant, but that's what Alexa guessed, because I told you, you know, ASR is not perfect. We're still learning. Can you guess what actually the customer meant when he or she said 10 grams? Can you guess? If you have a good answer, try to write it you know, on, on the chat box. We'd love to see whether you, you can guess. Give me two more seconds, three more seconds. One, two, three. Actually, what they mean is 10 grams. And our lex it was not yet in our lexicon, so we got it wrong because 10 grams is more frequent. That's kind of easy example. Let me give you a very hard and true example. The next one, Alexa, order to kill a grapefruit iPhone case. What did the customer mean? Obviously, the, you know, <laughs> they didn't ask Alexa to kill anyone, obviously, but we misunderstood. What did the customer mean? Can you guess? I'm giving you a little bit more time here. One. Two, three, four, five. Okay, this one is a very hard one. Actually, what the customer wanted, and it's a very rare need, a specific phone, iPhone case that have an illustration of tequila grapefruit. And of course, Alexa could not guess that because it's so rare, so weird. You know, tequila, grapefruit, iPhone, they don't go together. The, the reason I'm sharing these true examples with you is basically because it's all, all you know, it's all day-to-day -day life. We have to guess very weird needs because all our customers have we all of us have weird needs. 
we know all of us are, we, we look like to call that ordinary people with extraordinary tastes. That there has been some research on the topic. All of us have like very common needs, you know, we need toilet papers, but sometimes we want something as weird as a tequila grape food iPhone case. And of course, we are customer obsessed. Our goal is to satisfy you, you know, you the customer in any need you might have. Okay, so I hope I convinced you that it's not trivial. So we need to understand your needs and then we need to satisfy your needs. So what does that mean to satisfy your needs? It's really to anywhere you might be, you know, so at home, obviously, but on the go, right? You're with your phone, you have your, you have your Echo Auto in your car, or you have an Alexa and some cars already emb embedded, and we need to do what you want, otherwise we will breach trust. So we need first to satisfy simple needs, adding to shopping needs, reordering milk. But then, you know, if I say to Alexa, reorder my milk, what, who is my? So Alexa should understand it's me or my husband or my kids and my is whom. So actually you can teach Alexa today your voice. So if I say my milk or my husband say my milk should be a different one and, it, and she should be able to make the difference. We should also ask like very random questions because the whole thing is we are talking about shopping journey, right? You remember what I said before, it's we have these informational, transactional, navigational needs all along when we do shopping. So sometimes I'm not going to buy anything right now. I just want to know, you know, which is better, tuna or salmon? I want to ask, you know, is Fitbit waterproof? Um, you know, is Harry Potter good for kids? All these things we need to answer because this is part of the shopping journey. You know, shopping is not just buying, buying, buying. It's really a journey where you ask questions, you know, you read reviews, you give ratings. All that is part of the research challenges that we need to, to tackle. So we need to satisfy needs and then you know you can do that directly on your phone so if you have kind of you know of echo show again you know these kind of, of devices kind of these ones that have a screen you have the small one let me show you maybe this one you know like this one but they have no there's very, very cheap, and you can put them everywhere. There are so many, you know, incarnations, you can find the right one for you. But the, the key thing is that it's not only that, because it's a kind of holistic experience. Sometimes you're going to want to work, actually have your Echo Dot communicate with your phone because you want more information. And then, you know, you, you want to actually verify on your phone because it was a little bit more complex need. Or maybe you want to correct what Alexa, you know, Alexa guess something and you're not really happy with what with you know how she interpreted what you said so you can correct it on your phone for us it's not voice 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 it's really a multimodal holistic kind of experience so here here is an example that you can go to check out and you can conclude your transaction on your voice device or you can do it on your phone you have many many options to do that the next step is actually to predict needs and that's for us researchers like a, a dream because we need really to, to kind of read the future and we, need, we, we try to, to um, really to guess right. And one of the things, for instance, is to see your amount of consumption, right? How often are you going to order toilet papers? How often, the, you know, the, like say average people, maybe, you know, same type of household, do they replenish toilet papers? And maybe we are going to send you a reminder, but we need to do that in a tactful way because we don't want to annoy people, right? So I'm not going to send you like a zillion of notification, but if we think that, and we're pretty sure that you are basically running out of toilet paper very soon, we are going to suggest it to you. So now maybe you, you might be running low on toilet papers. Okay, of, you know, obviously during COVID, you know, all our predictions are kind of weird because people had very weird behavior, you know, with toilet papers, but in general, coffee, milk, etc. It, it was pretty well. But one thing that is super important that we, we call that insisting on higher standards, we do that only when we are very, very sure. So we better be good when we, we predict something for you and when we send, us, send you a notification, we have really to keep our, our precision level very, very high. And another example is actually when we predict your need is that sometimes we are going to try to have the community help each other. And that's what's interesting is that a year ago, it was not there because we didn't have this need yet. But enough people asked the question that we could actually go back to the community and we ask the community and they give us the answer. And then, you know, the next step, actually, we have an answer. And what's interesting in, in that example I'm giving you is that at the time, 
really, you know, we had a specific, uh, you know, type of bar that has 280 calories. Actually, now, you know, it's it's small, and we just adjusted because it depends on the size of your country or location, what type of sneaker bars, and we learn all the time. So that's one of the things in you know, the community we are learning. You know, we call that having not only, you know, a very smart AI, but we have customers in the loop, customers who are actually helping the AI getting smarter and smarter. So it's really, really a hard challenge for all of us. What we're seeing is that we have tons, tons of AI research challenges. You know, I talked of AI. We all dream of that. We all dream of having, you know, these smart robots who's like kind and gentle and funny. Actually, you can have jokes with, with uh, Alexa. Ask Alexa to, you know, to share jokes with you and she, you know, tell me a joke and she will. Uh, actually, one, you know, in my team, we are doing research on what we call computational humor. We, we discover that our customers are very funny and we can share the joke that they are saying about products with, with other customers. And, and that's super, that, that's actually for us a pleasure to see that, you know, shopping is also fun. It's not only, you know, being really task oriented, task, 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 to do, to do, to do. It's also, it can be fun as well because, there is no reason not to smile when you do some shopping. And so we are seeing really that, you know, our customers' behavior is changing all the time. They're surprising us by being funny, and we take advantage of that, and we are reactive to that. On the other hand, they are still, we are still not that used to interacting with a machine. I'm sure that if you try and we ask you not to talk to Alexa, you're going to see you know, the first time you do it, you're going to, to be a little bit awkward. And I know that at home when I'm, I'm asking, I'm watching something on Netflix or on, and I'm going to ask for the uh, IMDb rating. And if I don't pronounce the name of the, of the movie correctly, you know, Alexa is not going to really understand me. And I'm going to, to not to find my words and everyone is making fun of me because that's, we're learning, you know, we're learning to talk to a machine. And, and on the other hand, you know, the machine is learning to talk to us and you need to be too, too tangled. And that, that's kind of a beauty that we do all these things together. It's for AI to, to, to be successful, we need everyone to cooperate. And the beauty of it that today, and you know, we couldn't imagine it like, you know, 20 years ago, 20 years ago to launch a product, you would need the technology to be perfect. Today, we're learning together, we're getting better together. Everyone is an early adopter. So our behavior is evolving, the technology is evolving, and, and we're making major progress thanks to our customers, thanks to our users. We're getting better. The more people are using it, the more you know, needs arise, the better we're going to get. And that actually requires from us, the researchers, to, do, to come with more inventions in so many computer science disciplines, right? Automatic speech recognition, we talked about it. Natural language processing, we talked a little bit about it. Information retrieval, which is my field, which is search. Uh, you need to search and in the most difficult condition as possible. It's not like searching on the web, even if that big. You have a noisy signal, you have product search, which is complicated because, you, you know, if you want to pay for something, it better be perfect, right? Of course, machine learning and deep learning, you must have heard about it. It's kind of the new voodoo of AI. You know, let's be honest, we don't even understand 100% how it works, but it is working. You know, you have these huge machines with these networks, neural networks that we train on with more and more data, and they're doing like almost magical stuff. We, we can explain the math, but sometimes we are surprised by the, uh, you know, by the results. And the last but not the least, computer-human interaction. You can do the best algorithm in the, work, in the world. You can have the most efficient machines if you're not customer obsessed, if you're not human obsessed, if you don't respect and care and listen to your customer, they're not going to use it. And that's where we need to excel. So basically, you know, I share with you all these uh, challenges. I hope you, you understand that we are just at the beginning, but the, the, you know, the future is very, very promising. You know, we are dreaming to see Alexa everywhere, not only at home, I, you know, we have it at the office, but it's going to be better and better in the office. You know, imagine the kind of wonderful things that you, you can do everywhere in enterprises with Alexa everywhere, you know, managing your, your meetings, taking notes for your meeting, Alexa should be part of your, of your life in some sense, right? That's how we are, we are looking at it today, working hard. Um, and please, you know, use it, use it a lot, give a lot of feedback because that's how we are going to, to do it better and better. 
um, that's it for me. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much for your attention today.